We're going to be joined till about 45 after by Tony Tarantino, TarantinoProductions.com. He got into acting, producing, directing, I guess before his son was even born. And when we got this call about a week and a half ago, I, I looked into it, I vetted it, made some calls. Uh, and uh, he's a really interesting uh, person. The Tarantino family has, for over 80 years in the film industry, Tarantino Productions was established in 1958 as a general partnership between Dominic Tarantino and Tony Tarantino in 2017 for the first time since the founding of Tarantino Productions, LLC. Tony Tarantino decided to bring his son, Edward J. Tarantino, in as vice president. Tarantino Productions participates in the writing of screenplays and scripts. Uh, and it just goes on. He's got a very interesting background in history. He's a patriot. He's a conservative. I'll let him say a few minutes about his background in patriotism. But I, I got the contact... And I, and, I, and, I, and I was like, this is Tarantino's dad. And he says that he really is upset about what Quentin's saying. And, and my issue was he's defended Weinstein, Harvey Weinstein. Quentin has uh, Quentin for no reason. First time I ever saw him, he came over and told me to get the F out of here. And I was at a public movie theater watching The French Connection. I didn't know he was going to show up and speak. I knew the director was going to be there. And then he was there and it was his event. And some of the people attached to him uh, came over and um, basically costed us as we left and I was like wow I don't like Quentin Tarantino what a jerk um but he had a few films you could say were pretty good but that's not why I'm attacking him I'm attacking him because he went on Howard Stern and said that when Roman Kalansky uh drugged and raped that little girl that when it was a big national controversy that well it was consenting well no you can't pick up my 13-year-old daughter and if you convince her to have sex with you because you drug her, that it's consenting. It's, it's below the age of consent. That is a NAMBLA statement. And I don't want to just, I feel bad with his father here. Who I, I looked up, that was a good record and everything. But his dad wanted to come on to set the record straight about the family. We'll play that clip if you missed it from Howard Stern. And even Howard Stern gave him like, it goes on for like an hour. Like, dude, back off. You know, say you're joking. And Tarantino, Quentin, would not say that. And then... We learned talking to his father, and I don't know how much we want to get into on air, but it fits the M.O. of why somebody would think something like that if they themselves had been abused. Uh, uh, so this, this, this rabbit hole goes deep, but uh, Epstein's plane, the Lita Express, and of course, uh, Weinstein on board, the Clintons on board. I mean, this is a big house of cards. And why would Tarantino publicly defend that? And why would the media refuse to pick it up? I mean, if a guy slaps his wife, he gets in trouble, and he should. Or if somebody slaps a girl in the butt, they get fired. And they should get in trouble. But when it's, hey, it's okay for men to drug 13-year-olds and rape them in the butt, excuse my French, it's okay if Quentin Tarantino says it so. We're going to go to break here in a few minutes and come back with the, with the Stern clips. But Tony Tarantino, uh, I know it's probably hard for you to come on and talk about this, but why did you reach out to us and say for the family name that was in your first email, you wanted to come on and, 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 and make a statement about this? Uh, that's really important to me, Alex. It's, you know, my dad was everything to me. He was my hero. My dad was an actor in the early 30s. He did films with Tom Nix, Buck Jones, Tim McCoy. That picture of him that you just showed is on Tom Nix's horse, Tony. You know, he was an actor. I had to be an actor. My dad was a World War II Marine. He served in Guadalcanal and Iwo Jima. I had to be a Marine. The Tarantino name has integrity. It has respect. And what Quentin has been doing with it just sickens me. And I first spoke out against him and I think it was, what, 2015, when in New York he stood up and called all cops murderers. Now, I've got two cops in my family. One killed on duty. The other one died 50 years later after having his back broken three places, the Calabari uh, uh, obstructions that happened in Calabari University in New York. He just recently passed away from bone cancer due to those injuries. Fifty years apparently. So, so you're, you're, you're Marines, you're police, you're, you're patriots, and, and you're, you're pissed that your son is pissing all over it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then here's another point that I make to me that's important. He really has no technical or legal uh, right to the Tarantino. 
When he was between two and a half and three years old, his mother remarried, and her new husband, Zastapil, Pill, adopted Quentin. So his legal name is Quentin Jerome Zastapil. He went all through school and everything he did as Zastapil. Then when he decided he wanted to get into the film industry, he decided to jump on the Tarantino name. That already had some recognition in the industry. Uh, and one thing, he made a public statement once, and he says, uh, my my dad or Tony Tarantino wanted to be an actor, and until he took my name, he now he's an actor. That is so sick. My first film that I was ever in was Where the Boys Are in 1958, five years before he was born. No, I know. Your IMDb is huge. Your dad's IMDb, uh, IMDb is huge as well. Uh, so it just shows the, the total upside down world. Talk about a three barreled name. That sounds like some British royalty name he got. He ought to keep his adopted little British royalty name instead of a cool name like Tarantino. Uh, I can't think of a more American sounding name like Rocky Tarantino. I would mess with that guy. We'll be right back with Tony Tarantino straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones, and we're going to set the record straight with his father about why he's promoting stuff. Coming up, the videos on Infowars.com. The uh, father looks like Kevin Costner. Leftist bully father of Florida shooting victim for supporting Trump. I don't feel sorry for him. F Trump. And so that video is on Infowars.com. It's a Kellen McBreen article. We're going to be covering it coming up. Now, Tony Tarantino, the confirmed, admitted father of Quentin Tarantino, one of the biggest directors in Hollywood, is our guest. He has Tarantino Productions. His dad was a World War II vet, veteran. Uh, of Iwo Jima, a Marine, he himself a patriot, uh, and he's on record in hundreds of films, directing in, in TV shows, movies, you name it. And so he's Quentin Tarantino's dad, and I just got up there and pointed out, I guess early last week, if you just tuned in, that um, the media ignores reports of pedophilia, men and women being raped. Uh, I'm not against gay people in general, but there is a, quote, gay mafia, gay Hollywood folks have said, where men get abused and then no one speaks up for them. Uh, and there's been a lot of reports about you know, Tarantino and others spitting on women, making them wreck cars, do dangerous stunts, all sorts of sexual assault by Weinstein being covered up, rape, you name it. And the media leaves Tarantino alone for some reason. And so that's a big question for his father. Why do they leave him alone? And why would Quentin go on Howard Stern and say, in the middle of a firestorm about Roman Polanski, the you know, had a girl he grabbed, drugged, raped. Why would he say it's consensual? That's NAMBLA type talk. It wasn't consensual, plus it can't be legally because he's not the age of consent. So it's why you know a 12-year-old can't get breast implants or have a sex change. I mean, it's the same thing, but the left wants to lower the age of consent so they can come in, tell parents not to be parents. They come in, take control of your children. That's the program. So uh, he, he joins us now, but I want to play a clip of this. Uh, so he can respond to it, uh, of uh, Quentin Tarantino, his son, on Howard Stern. When you, Gary Garber, our reporter out in Hollywood, interviewed you, here's what you said. i got to ask you about this. Okay. This, 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 I, this I don't understand. Your movie I understand. Mm -hmm. This I don't. You ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Hey, Quentin, how you doing, man? Hey, how's it going, man? Pretty good. Nice to meet you. Uh, what have you done to make the world a better place? I don't know. Uh, what do you think I've done? Cool movies. Oh, well, I'll, there, I'll stand with that. Fiction's awesome. Yeah. Hey, uh, were you happy when Rowan Pulaski won the Oscar? Yeah, that was pretty cool, actually, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's so great about a rapist being the recipient of Hollywood's highest honor? Oh, I, don't, I don't consider him a rapist. All right, that's the one. That, how can you defend... See, I don't understand this. Mm -hmm. How come Hollywood embraces this madman, this director who raped a 13-year-old? He didn't rape a 13-year-old. It was statutory rape. Yeah, all right. All right. Well, that's <laughs> not quite the same thing. All right? Come on. <laughs> Enough said. It's it's not statutory rape. You know, he had sex with a with a minor. All right, that's not rape to me. When you use the word rape, all right, right. you're talking about violent throwing them down. It's like one of the most violent crimes in the world. You can't throw, you know, throwing the word rape around is like throwing the word racist around. All okay. right, you know, okay. it just doesn't apply to everything that people use it for. All right, you know, he was he's, he was guilty of having sex with a minor all right? that she didn't want to have. No, that was not the case at all. She wanted to have it. Well, and, and dated the transcripts. Dated, dated the guy. Dated 
dated the guy. Dated and, and the guy. And she was 13. And found out. Well, you know, by the way, we're talking about America's morals. We're not talking about the morals in Europe and everything. Uh, All right. I'll uh, stop right there. More the so the argument is it's consensual. But she was drugged and taken there by a woman. And none of this is even true. And it's in the police report. But he's going with the Hollywood story, though. He's dating, yeah, a 40-something-year-old man, a 13-year-old girl. And and then, you know, she's bleeding all over the place. And, and, and then they sell this while they're saying men and women together is bad. And, and Me Too movement trying to break up families. Then, but pedophilia is okay. So... Uh, I know you talked to the producer quite a bit, sir, and we'll come back in a long segment coming up. But hearing that, what uh, generally either people are predators or they've been preyed on when they think like that. Nambla's argument is they should be able to come to your door, my door, and go, you got a five-year-old daughter, 10-year-old daughter, son, whatever. If they want to go on a date with me, the UN is even looking at trying to make this world law that if the child wants to go, they're emancipated, they go. They want to go on a sailing ship with, you know, 100 Somalis and you know, it, it's up to them. I mean, no more parental rights. Your kid wants a vaccine, they get it. Your kid wants to watch, take drugs, they, they do it. This is an attack on parenthood, parental rights, obviously. Uh, but I mean, what, as Quentin Tarantino's father, and him hanging out with Weinstein and all this, and all the new controversies, what do you make of this, sir? Well, you know, for one, it totally infuriates me. If me or you, as an adult male, take an adult female out and get her stoned out of her head on alcohol, then take her to a room and have sex with her, that's rape. You get charged with it. That's illegal. Look, look at all the cases that have come out uh, with things like that about men just getting a woman intoxicated and taking advantage of her. That's rape. Now you take a 13-year-old, I mean, God, I wouldn't care if this 13-year-old was the most beautiful female on the face of the earth and she comes up and says, I want you. you got to be plumb out of your ever-loving mind to even think about taking advantage of something like that. Uh, you know, I've got three books right here behind me written on Quentin Tarantino, and I'm quoting you some of the things he said, and they're in these books. One thing that he said is that when he was a kid, 11, 12 years old, his mother used to take him to the Pussycat Theaters and sit there and watch porn films with him. Wow. Now, that's a statement he made, and it's in one of these books. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's sick. It really is. There, there's no excuse for it. Quentin, i got to say, is a filmmaking genius. He's done some phenomenal work. But on the other hand, He's such an egotistical maniac that thinks he's above everything else. He sits on $150 million of his own capital. He could afford to do anything he wants. Like right now, Sony is threatening to drop his new film on uh, um, the Manson family. That's, that's uh, been all over the social media. I've seen it. Um, well, that's my next he, question. He's into... He introduced everybody, Pulp Fiction, men raping men, torture, now the Manson family, Satanism, Helter Skelter. He's being used as a conduit by some very bad people. And usually people that say pedophilia is okay, whether abused themselves or been involved. And then we, he, he writes, as you said, he was going to porn theaters with his mother. I can't believe they let him in to triple X porn theaters at 11 or 12 years old. This sounds to me like, like Quentin himself may have been abused. It, it sounds to me too, but I couldn't verify that because I don't know. You know, I did. Well, not is it not abuse to take an eleven-year-old or twelve-year-old boy to a porno theater? I mean, I wouldn't go to one of those myself. Uh, I'm riding a crazy girlfriend in college once wanted to go to one, and I said, "You think I'm a like, hell no, lady?" So, I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, as an adult, I wouldn't go on one of those filthy things. So that's what I'm saying is, where, uh, wow. You know, and then too, because of all of this and what he's I've got a film going now that I've written three years ago before I met Donald Trump, before Donald Trump was running for president. And this film happens to go along with everything he's promoting in his administration. Well, let's talk uh, about that when we come back, Dan. This is very interesting. Quentin Tarantino's biological father on video Skype with us. If you're a TV viewer or radio listener, you can hear him. Amazing. Infowars.com forward slash show. Coming up after our guest leaves.
We've got 16 Russians indicted, three institutions, 13 people. This is amazingly good news. It shows Mueller has nothing. It is low-level PR companies that were trying to get advertising for their products. They were attacking Hillary, supporting Hillary. They were hijacking every meme out there, which are thousands of companies we know of. To say thousands, that's conservative. They just take whatever the trend is, and they just write stuff about it. They link to it, and you jump on it. That, that, that's how a lot of people run the Internet. We try to lead the Internet. We try to actually create you know, the, 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 the new research, the new trends to wake people up. But, but let's put DrudgeReport.com back up. Let's, let's see the headline. D.C. rocked. Mueller indicts 13 Russians. Trolls of 2016. And Drudge has got the right term. I was trying to think during the last hour, who are these people? They're attacking Trump during the campaign. They're supporting him. They're, they're attacking him after. And, they're, and I went, wait a minute. Why are so many of those things they jumped on? Things I said, things we created, like Hillary for president in 2016. And it's because they were viral. I mean, we sold by then like 80,000 T-shirts. Trump was like, my God, Alex, everywhere I go, your T-shirts are there. You'd go to the RNC, it was just every other shirt. People saw that, they jumped on it. And, and then they go, oh, Jones, Hillary for tr prison is the Russians. No, it's me. It's you, the listeners. You decided to buy the shirt. It got huge. Some Russian marketing company, something political, jumped on, and that's all Mueller's got. This is incredible. Tony Tarantino, father of Quentin Tarantino, I'm not on some mission against Quentin. And, and, and you're his dad, and you've been in a lot of films, a lot of movies before him, and you know it's strange that you were already in film, and your dad was in film, and then he got into it. Maybe, I guess, because he was looking back on what you'd done, but you've got to do film out or film you're producing. Tell us about that you are, you want to produce. But just getting into his psychology, you mentioned when he wrote the book, you're being careful here about being taken to porno theaters by his mother back when I guess it wasn't on, wasn't internet or wasn't, you know, Cinemax or whatever on, on cable. I have seen that when I was a teenager. Um, why would he defend Roman Polanski and pedophilia? And then why, I mean, why is he so arrogant and why is he being protected by Hollywood? You know, that's a damn good question. The only thing I can come up with is, is because of power. You know, money and power within the industry. It's just the same thing that Weinstein was accused of, uh, telling women they'd be blackballed, they'd never work again if they didn't submit to his commands. Uh, and basically, in my opinion, that's the same strength of the same position uh, that Quentin is using. And when you look at Roman Polanski, what he's been able to get away with because, again, of his recognition of his position. You know, I met Harvey uh, at, I think we sent you a picture at the... Yeah, let's uh, put that up. Tony Tarantino uh, with the Harvey Weinstein. When we have that photo, let's put that up. Go ahead. Now, that was an award ceremony for Quentin at the Beverly Center. I saw Harvey walking up, and I was excited. I wanted to go over and meet him. He was walking up, and he had this gorgeous young thing on his arm. And I walked up to him, and I said, hey, Harvey, let me introduce myself. I'm Tony Tarantino. And he looked at me really felt like, and he said, don't bother me. I'm busy right now. And I looked at him, and... I'm like you. I say what comes to my head, and a lot of times it gets me in trouble. But uh, And I just looked at him, and I said, yeah, Harvey, that's obvious. You're too busy being an asshole, and walked off. Uh, and that, that was my introduction to Harvey White. Uh, these people, all of them, regardless of who they are, they become so full of themselves and self-importance and power within the industry that they basically feel they're above the law, they're above reproach, and they get away with any damn thing they feel like. And when you listen to some of the idiotic things that he has said, not just now, but all through his career ever since he became well-known. And to me, that's really too bad. Hey, I'm an actor, but I'm no different than anybody else. That's what I do for a living. That doesn't make me... Uh, you know, above anybody else in any other way. Uh, it's just what you do for a living. You you have a job. You, you have what you do for a living, and you're good at it. But that doesn't say.
tend to set you up against the rest of the world and make you any better of a person than anybody else. And people that take that attitude and think they are, they're sick. They have a real problem. They need to come back down to earth. Somebody needs to put them there. And honestly, that's not my intent. I don't want to. Well, let me ask you this them. question. It was 16 years ago because my son's almost 16. My ex-wife was about six months pregnant. And uh, I, there was one Alamo draft house that was called the Ritz downtown. It's in a new location now. But it was a big theater they built out of an old warehouse. And I went to see the French Connection. I knew the director was going to be there, but I didn't care about that. It was back when there weren't a lot of movie theaters. They were going to show The Exorcist next that he'd done. I didn't care about that. I only bought the ticket for the first movie. So I go with my pregnant wife. We sit down. I watched the movie, eat pizza. But, of course, Quentin got up at the first, and, and then the director came on. So I'm leaving, and then one of the guys associated with the local paper comes and gets in my face. says, what are you doing here? And then Quentin walks over out in the big hall, open area, and goes, what, what the F are you doing here, blah, blah, blah. I guess he knew who I was. I kind of ignored it, and my ex-wife comes out of the bathroom, and, and, and I say, hey, let's get out of here. And then I'm going down the stairs, and the guy affiliated with the local newspaper, affiliated with it, Nobody's going down the big red stairs at that point. Everybody's upstairs. He jumps down with his feet and tries to, like, knock her down the stairs. And then laughs and goes, oh, I'm sorry, it's an accident, it's an accident. And they had the local paper person up there with a pad in their hand. It was a lady. And then no one's up there. I'm looking up because it's this big area, open area outside. The, there's only one theater there. And there's Quentin Tarantino kind of pops out like a, like a barracuda or something and just goes right back. And so I don't think he was behind that, but he told me to get the F out of here. Just the arrogance of somebody like that to 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 act like that. That's why when I saw him do the Howard Stern stuff and say how ah, big deal about sex with little you know with little girls or whatever, it just made me ask. This guy really thinks he's God. Yeah, yeah, and he's proven that. I don't know why, but he's really come after me big time. Uh, I had Prism funded through Wells Fargo Bank. And then I got a call, and I have it on voicemail because I couldn't take the call at the time. The vice president of finance over Wells Fargo Bank called me. And on a voicemail, he said, hey, well, we got a visit from Weinstein and Quentin, and after a discussion with them, we decided not to go with you. And then not long after that, I got another deal. That was a $55 million deal. Then after that, I got another deal with a company called uh, – uh, what is Cedar Cedar Fair? They owned all these amusement parks like uh, Knoxbury Farm, and they were going with me. And then because I was all over the internet and everywhere else supporting Donald Trump, I got an email from them saying, "Hey, we decided not to go with you. You're too politically sensitive." So that's, that's how it works. So, so they have they claim there's a red list and they've been persecuted. They're persecuting people that are just common sense and are anti-America, and they think it's all funny. And it, I was reading about him spitting on Uma Thurman, and all, and you're like, but it happened to me. It's like it's just like some dude wanted to be a big bully and do whatever he wants. And at a certain point, he's getting called out. TarantinoProductions.com. People can find out about your new productions there. Look forward to speaking to you again in the future. Tony Tarantino, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. All right, we'll be back with all the big news boiled down. A lot of it's been breaking since we had him on for the last 40 minutes. Very interesting, though. And I, I, don't, I don't care about Hollywood. I don't care about, you know, all their stupid crap. I'm not attacking it because I'm not part of it because I've already turned it all down. I'm covering it so you understand why you hear people like Tarantino say this type of evil crap.